Hey guys, welcome to another magic video. Today we are on day five. We are almost done with the complete first week of preview season for Amon Ket. Uh, we've got some kind of fringe cards to talk about today. Not too many to talk about. Uh, no planeswalkers or gods the, uh, today. But we do have a couple uh, interesting cards to say the least. It's going to be a rather shorter video this week. But what we are going to get is some super, super interesting cards that might see play in some other formats. Um, more casual cards, commander cards, things like that. But you never know. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you hit, uh, hit the like button and get subscribed. Uh, think about leaving a comment in there. Talk about the cards you see today and what you think of the set so far. So let's jump in real quick here. And the first cards I wanted to bring up are green. Uh, green is actually looking to be pretty strong. Um, might be able to uh, fit in with a green-white or a green-blue strategy. Um, I don't think mono green is going to be a thing. Uh, we'll see. But um, we've got champions, uh, champion of Ronos. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, one green, three generic for a Jackal Warrior 3-3. Three, three. And this is an excellent card because you get to cheat things in the play. Who doesn't like doing that? You know, there's rules for playing Magic. And when you get to break those rules is when people start to have fun. As long as you're on one side of it, I guess. Uh, but anyway, his ability is whenever you exert Champion of Ronos... I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, as it attacks, when you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So basically, when this ability goes off, you can play whatever you can put into play whatever you want. That creature's not tapped and attacking; it just enters the battlefield. You're not casting it, so you don't get any, you don't get any of the extra cast uh, uh, bonuses or anything like that. But it is a you know a three three on turn four. Uh, so your turn five, you're attacking with it. So you, you know you're getting one creature out early. Um, if you can get this warrior out on turn three, uh, and you're attacking with your three three, that might be a possibility. Um, the uh, what was it the cartouche? I'm trying to think of. Uh, there was something. I don't know. If you can give, if you can give, a, have a way to give this thing haste. When it hits the battlefield on turn four, then you might. Now we're kind of talking. Um, tacking on turn five and dropping your biggest thing in your hand, eh. But if you can, you know, get a mana dork out and play this maybe a turn earlier and maybe get to a way to give it haste, um, it might see some fun play. Uh, maybe in modern, possibly. Um, in limited. It's going to be kind of hit or miss. Um, you know, it's a rare, so you're not going to see a bunch of them. But um, you know, if you draw this and your and your bomb in your opening hand, you, hey, there you go. They have one turn to kill this thing before. I mean, this is probably going to be one of those suicidal guys where you're not you're not going to get them back if they have the opportunity to, or maybe you will. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the next card, uh, Dissenter's Deliverance. This is probably the most push card that we've seen so far. Um, this is kind of like the fatal push of the set, if you will. Uh, well, maybe not that. Well, I guess, I mean, I wouldn't say that far, but it's definitely pushed uh, for standard uh, because it's an instant for one green, one generic, destroy target artifact, and it also has, and this is the key point of the, of the card, cycling for one green. That's right, one green, if you you know this, that's what makes it main deckable, uh, especially with Mardu vehicles being a big thing. Heart of Curan is a hard card to you know play against um, because it's not always a creature. So, and no one wants to main deck artifact hate unless they're playing against that. So if game one Heart of Curan is you know all over the place, you know, in winning games. Game two, it gets, you know, slightly worse because people can side in their hate. This is a card that you can put one or two of in your main deck and not feel too bad about it because if you're not playing Mardu vehicles, or if you're not playing against Mardu vehicles, you can cycle this away and draw another card. Um, it, it doesn't call it, it would be significantly worse if it was one green and one generic for cycling, but they really pushed it and I'm impressed. 
Uh, next up, we've got our we've got two white angels. This is excellent. So winged shepherd is five generic, one white for an angel. Uh, three three with flying vigilance and cycling one white. Um, it's I mean it's a common, so you're gonna get a lot of them sealed. I can see you playing maybe one. Um, the flying vigilance is a good thing. Like I said, like I've said in the past videos, flying is probably one of the most underrated. Uh, abilities, uh, especially when you're playing in a seal tournament like your pre-release, um, the fact that this thing can block and attack uh, in the same uh, round is excellent. The f it's a three-three. It's a little tough to swallow. Um, so you know, if you don't have anything better, you know, three damage isn't you know a lot. But again, a couple hits with this thing will bring you know really put the pressure on. So, and again, if you have if you grab this on your opening hand. You know, just think of it as, okay, this is my turn one cycle. You know, cycling this instead of dropping a crappy one drop is probably is a better idea. Um, then we have Angel of Sanctions. This is white, white with three generic, Angel 3-4 Mythic. Uh, he has flying, and when he enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until angel of sanctions leaves the battlefield and then it also has embalm for one white and five generic so that means once it's dead you can basically cast it from your your graveyard exile it, and you get a token that's the exact same copy of the angel except that it's a white zombie angel <laughs> um which is kind of interesting a white zombie and an angel zombie at that so um it's a great card. Uh, I don't know. It won't. I don't think it'll see play in standard right off the bat, just because there's so much, you know, so many more cards that fit that profile. Um, five mana drop. You know, Archangel Avacyn comes to play, uh, comes to mind, um, and then also, I mean, you got Heart of Kieran, which is a four four for two. So I mean, with flying and vigilance, I believe. I'm not. I can't remember uh, exactly. Remember, but anyway. Uh, the 4-4, four, four, you know, is definitely going to beat out the 3-4, so it can't beat Heart of Kirin, if, even if it tried. Um, but it, what it can do is it can exile a non-land permanent, which would be Heart of Kirin. So it can fight against it. So it might see some play in in respect of, you know, exiling the Heart of Kirin um, and getting it off the battlefield. So, But again, there's a couple of newer ways to deal with it that are cheaper and more effective. This is, you know, the body on this thing just isn't up to snuff. If it, if you're in limited, this might be something to play in limited because it's recursion. It's got flying. It deals with your, you know, your opponent's biggest, baddest thing. Right, you know, right that in there, and it's, you know, it's a top end. You're not gonna get a ton of them, but you know, it's a good reason to go into that color. Uh, we've got a couple more white cards. We finally have a camel. Yes, supply cavern, uh, caravan. Excuse me. Uh, one white with f and four generic for a three five. Uh, when this guy enters the battlefield, you get uh, if you control a tapped creature, create a one one white warrior creature token with vigilance. So two bodies, four six total of toughness and power over two bodies. Not too shabby for five. Um, it's a common. And, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You get a chump blocker and, you know, this huge, you know, wall thing. So, eh, it is what it is. So, um, I mean, you'll play a few of them in your, in your sealed deck. Obviously, in limited and draft, you're not going to take a whole bunch of these unless, you know, they're, they're, you know, left and that's all there is. The next card, which is super fun, this is going to be a great card to build around. Uh, approach of the second sun. It is one white and six generic sorcery. If approach of the second sun was cast from your hand, and you cast another spell named approach of the second sun, this game you win the game. If not, you gain seven life and put approach of the second sun back into your library as the seventh card from the top. So, um. Super fringe alternate win condition, which is interesting. Um, it's nice because it, you know, it, it can fit into commander card, uh, commander decks because it it's a self reliant uh, win condition. Um, the The nice thing is if uh, you cast it and it gets countered, it goes to your graveyard, 
So it still has been cast, so you can, if you have a way of fishing it out of your graveyard, or if you have multiple copies in your deck, uh, you can, you know, cast it again. Um, but it sets itself up, so if you cast it and you haven't casted a, a first one prior, or one prior to this, you it gets put back into your seventh card down, so you got to wait seven more turns to get to it. But if you've got some card draw, you might be able to get it back. Um, it gets around the whole like casting thing, you know, duplicate copies and things like that, and you know, cast a spell without paying its mana cost and um, things of that nature. It kind of gets around some of those uh, shenanigans with the way it's worded, but it it's possible. I mean, you're gonna gain seven life, so it's gonna set you up for a little bit of a long term game. Um, I could see, you know, I could see a real fun deck and you know, playing with this and Gideon uh, or the new Gideon. Um, you know, being able to protect Gideon to stay alive long enough to get to your second second son. Um, I don't know. It, it might be kind of fun. So next up, we've got a single blue card, uh, new uh, perspectives, one uh, one blue and five generic enchantment at the rare slot. Uh, when new perspectives uh, enters the battlefield, draw three cards. So it's, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Draw three cards is great. But it does more. As long as you have seven or more cards in your hand, you may pay zero rather than pay cycling costs. So this is a great card for you know the cycling decks uh, to kind of, you know, I don't want to say, I guess it is technically rummaging. Rummaging through your deck and trying to find something. Uh, drawing three cards should put you up to um, the seven card range. Uh, or more, hopefully. Uh, the the next problem that you have is you know being able to find the cards you want and continue to cycle uh, without losing any momentum. So it's you know at six at the six drop range, uh, this is definitely something that you know will require some finesse, but it could be kind of fun. Um, definitely don't play this in limited. Um, and sealed, it's definitely not worth it at all. There's just too much setup, not enough payoff. Um, the draw three cards is is impressive, and maybe in sealed it might be worth going for just be for the, you know, just for the simple fact of that it's got the draw three cards, and you might be able to reload your hand even though you don't get to the seven cards, you know, at that late in the game. But you know, if you if you don't have another draw spell. You know, maybe blue is not your thing, so we'll see. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Nimble Blade Kahiran, Kahira. One red, one generic Jackal Warrior with prowess, one three. Uncommon, that's it. Cast a spell, a non-creature spell, it gets plus one, plus one to one turn. Um... It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough because you know if it since it doesn't have haste you know haste and prowess really run great together when a prowess creature does not have haste it's you know it's kind of like ho hum you know this is this comes down on turn two and then turn three you can attack with it and I've, you know if if you if you're on the play you might take out something good uh, there's their two or three drop you might be able to, you know if you're on the play on turn three then they have a two drop. So you might you'll probably be able to take out their chump blocker or whatever. So eh, it's it's not too shabby. Um, if you have a way to give this thing trample, that might be interesting. Uh, next up, we have uh, Bounty of the Luxa. This is one blue, one green, and two generic enchantment rare. At and this is an interesting <laughs> card. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all flood counters from Bounty of Luxa. If no counters were removed this way, put a flood counter on Body of Luxa and draw a card. Otherwise, add one colorless and one blue and one green to your mana pool. So it's like every other turn you're getting a card or you're getting three mana. It's, it's you know, uh, it's not too hateful, but I just feel like, you know... If it was at the beginning of your pre-combat uh, or post-combat uh, main phase, that would have been a little bit better, only because the turn you play it, it would actually do something. I, I hate spells that at four mana don't do anything when they hit the battlefield, right? It just it it doesn't help anything. Now the next card, on the other hand, is an excellent card. Um, it's kind of getting mixed reviews. Um, I don't think it's going to be uh, good in, in um, constructed play uh, outside of 
uh, modern. It's too it's too expensive for uh, vintage and and legacy and all that. But uh, cruel reality is five generic black black for an enchantment or a curse at the mythic rare spot. So, yes, it's a curse, uh, which is awesome. It, it plays well with the curses from the original Innistrad set and the other fetch uh, curse cards and things of that nature that have per been printed in modern. But it reads, Enchant player, at the beginning of Enchanted player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. If the player can't, he or she loses five life. So, the difference between these two cards is the turn you play them something happens, right? Well, you, Cruel Reality, you've got to save, you know, pass the turn, and then something happens at the beginning of their turn. But, you know, you're not waiting a full your full turn plus their turn then coming back to yours for something to happen. And this is the difference where I think um, Wizards needs to really look at what what cards are being played and how, and this is a, a I, can, I think it's a safe place to push. Like, you know, Bounty of Luxa definitely could have been post combat. Yeah, you're paying for it to draw a card. Okay, that's, that's not that pushed, right? And then, you know, you're getting three mana the turn after that, and then you're getting a draw card. You know, I don't think it's, I don't think it would have broken the game. I really don't. Especially having two color symbols and, you know, two requirements uh, for the casting cost. Eh. And then, you know, Cruel Reality is seven, which seems like a, a, real, a lot. It really does. But if you think about it this way, in Limited, I think this is a great card in Sealed. I really do. Um... Just because if in black, you know, this is your, if you think about the, you know, the type of game black mages play, um, if you're able to control the board as far as, you know, kill spells, this would be great with, if you bundle this with red and you have some, um, you have some removal as far as instant damage is concerned. This, I think this would be an excellent win condition. This, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's guaranteed to kill something unless they can get rid of it. You know, there's not a lot of enchantment hate going on right now. Um, and heck, if you kill a two-two, kill a three. Kill, if you kill two things with this card, you know, two for one, great. You get another one, great. If you're clearing out their board, that's what limited's all about. Now, as far as draft is concerned, obviously this isn't the first card you pick. If you're in black and you've got, you know, a good suite of removal spells or ways to interact with your opponent's creatures to control or board to force their hand, you know, losing five life is, you know, that's a that's a four turn clock. Especially if you can, you know, stack a couple of pieces of damage through your creatures on that before turn seven. Um so I you know it's it's uh, it's expensive, but if I open one at my release, I'm going to use it. And I'll test it out, and tell you guys how it works. So um, that's all the cards we have for this episode, guys. Uh, again, you know I really appreciate you watching. It's uh, like I said, it's day five uh, that rounds out the first week of uh, pre-release uh, season. We've got one more week to go, and then we'll have the pre-release. I'm excited for it. Tell me about uh, in the comments below. Tell me about what cards you're excited to play with. You know this is a this this set is shaping up to be a awesome experience. Uh, there's a lot of flavorful cards, a lot of great interactions between the cards. I want to hear from you guys what you're excited about. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, on Monday for the next day. Uh, we'll take the weekend off. On Monday, we'll probably have a longer episode. We'll go over all the cards, if there were any cards released during the weekend. Usually there's not. But if there are, we'll go over those um, on Monday, and uh, we'll have an expanded show on Monday. So I look forward to hear, uh, hearing from you guys, and we'll talk to you soon.